Welcome back to another episode of the uh, Gruesome Garage. It's another beautiful day. Raining as usual, but uh, can't complain. We're getting ready to wire up some coils. What are you looking for here, Jeff? Just looking for the sensor grounds. We have five sensor grounds. Left, I used one for the coolant temp. And I'm probably going to split off so they're going to share, the coils are going to share a sensor ground each. So we're going to use three of the five sensor grounds. I know I need one more for the cam position sensor. And I'm just going to leave an extra one just in case I find another sensor or two that needs one. You know, let's say Matt wants to put flex fuel or something in. Why not just keep a sensor ground for extra down the road? So we don't have to hack into our existing harness we can pull out of our spare. Exactly. Makes life a little easier, makes Jeff a little happier. Let's wire up some coils. Right now we are just pulling some Swiss ignition power to our coils. So I'm just laying out, that's gonna be our, that's gonna what the red wire is gonna be. So I'm just pulling, if you guys wanna check out my cool little helper over here. Just got it on a spool and I'm pulling it to here about this length and it's gonna all get hooked up to our switch power on the painless fuse box. So super simple, super easy, but you know, takes a little time. So as you guys can see, we have a uh, couple new additions here in our, what would you call this Jeff, our uh... power area. Yeah. You know, the, the main brain. The wire zone. We got a uh, little painless fuse box here. Doesn't matter. You guys know what it looks like inside. Bunch of tabs for fuses, all labeled, everything nice. And uh, we got a power distribution here. So our main power will come to this, and then from there, go to everything else. So out of the painless box, you get a uh, all these red wires. These are all constant power. And... Uh, all these orange wires are switched power so we're going to be wiring in our coils here to the switch power so when you turn the ignition on that will come on and it will also send power to the mega squirt as well through the relay box we are back we got three out of the four wires run for our coils one of these is a sensor ground from the mega squirt the yellow and the yellow all the yellows are the sparks, so it's spark A, spark E, spark C, spark F, spark B, and spark D. So there's obviously two extra off of the MS3X because it has eight spark outputs, but we're only using six, so the other two are getting tied away. And so we got the yellow down, we got the black down, and the red, which I was explaining before, that's getting hooked into our painless fuse box. That's the switch ignition for these, so that's three out of the four pins that go in here and the last pin we're going to use white and that's going to be the ground to the block itself so that's all four pins let's get this wired up and make it a little fancier than this spaghetti sauce over here so as you can see it looks like an absolute disaster it's a little prettier than before but we got most of the wires there we just have to split off the sensor grounds. I am sharing them between two coils because there's only so many sensor grounds on the Mega Squirt. And I don't have enough for the coil packs plus the cam sensor. So we're throwing these together, splitting them apart. And I'm just using the zip ties temporarily right now to hold it all together. And then I'm gonna start running this sheath around the wires as we go together. And hopefully it'll look a little prettier and it'll work. All right, so we made a little more progress in here. We've got our relay box back in here and we had to solder a few wires in here. So this red wire here is the 12 volt battery. That's what it says on here, which will go right to the power distribution here. This is our switched 12 volts, which will be wired into our painless harness over here, which will be turned on with the in a single ignition switch send power to everything and this is our engine ground so this will be wired probably through here through here to our uh, engine and grounded so that's done 
now with this relay box, we have a harness that goes from, I don't know if you can see this connector here, DB37, up to this DB37. We have the harness cut, we just gotta make the plug for that. And then, now we can start tying in all of these, which are our sensors, uh, injectors, a few other things. Most so. of the input sensors, so our coolant temp, idle air control, throttle position, and a couple others are going through this relay box. Most of the others are going through the mega squared itself through this cord right here. And I don't know if we talked about this already, but we pulled the O2 sensor wiring through. This is going to the gauge and then it's also going to the mega squared itself. The nice thing about the O2 sensor that we got, it's obviously a wide band and if you see the connector right there it <clears throat> the wide band and the gauge come with its own controller so or driver so we don't have to you know play wiring games we can just hook it straight into the mega squared itself there is a lead the sensor lead and a and a sensor ground that we just have to hook into the mega squirt and everything will work and we can keep the gauge for the AFR while Jeff's working on the coils out here, I'm gonna get started tying all these wires into our relay board here. Jeff's up to over here. Slowly but surely, if you guys can check it out, we are splicing together the coil packs. Got a little prettier, so all we gotta do is put our pins on there, pull this up, click, click them in, click it in, and give it a little heat shrink to make it pretty. So let's hop on that.
filters into here. We got our water temperature, our intake air temperature, our throttle position sensor, and our idle air control. Very simple, very straightforward. It's all in the mega squirt uh, manual instructions, whatever you want to call it. it. Tells you what every little thing on this is, wire color, everything. So really simple. Jeff's still over here working on the coils. A little tricky, but it looks like he's got it figured out. Slow process, but we're getting there. And uh, I've wired as much as I can inside here. And uh, now it's time. See these big ugly holes here? We're gonna patch them up. So, made myself a template of this. Made one of the other one really simple. Pull the piece of cardboard from the inside here, trace it out. Cut and dry. We got our we got our template cut here, or I mean our piece. It's gonna go in right there. And you see the holes, they'll all get rivets in them. And then uh, we'll put a, put a nice bead of RTV on here just to seal it up. A couple of rivets and our handy dandy rivet gun. We'll blast them in. As my brother was tinkering, I was also tinkering. I got everything done except for the last coil because of course. I've never spliced or crimped one of these pins before in my life, and I screwed, really tiny guy. I screwed up a couple, so I need to go find some. So I think there's a place around here, a little computer store that might have them, so we'll check it out. But for now, I got everything else cleaned up. The only thing really I have to run in the engine bay is the cam sensor and the crank sensor. What are we working on? Working on splicing in the injector wires to switch power off of the relay box. Right here. There's only four slots, so we're gonna splice two together into one, like this, two to one, and then the other two we'll just directly put in. So we we'll use all four slots up, should be fine. I just used a little thicker wire than I should have. For the rest, obviously, we went down to 20, so. This is really the only mistake that I made, and we're making up for it. As you can see, we have our panels in here. We'll save these two holes probably for starter alternator wires, or we'll, or we, we'll use this one. Might use these for heater hoses, we'll see. Don't know yet, but uh, now that we got those in, still got some wiring to do here. A couple more sensors to wire in. We need to make up our harness that goes from here, right to here, to the relay box. We need to tie in all our constant power from the battery out of our distribution. This we may not wire all in right now, like horn, lights, all that stuff. We just want to get the motor running for now. All right, so we're making some good progress on the Jeep right now. We have all our coils wired in. Jeff's tying some stuff in on the inside. And really, all that's left to do is crank position, cam position sensor, Wiring the alternator starter and uh, some power distribution, just some stuff like that. Really not anything major left to do in the next episode. If you join us next week, hopefully we will wire in our sensors. It's a little tricky. We're going to show you guys exactly how we did it. Hopefully it works. If not, we'll let you know. So join us next week.